I'm here from our San Francisco office. It's 4 a.m. ish here, but I'm a morning person, so we got this. Uh, and I'm really excited to show you some of the new things ahead in Figma. But first, I want to talk about Europe. Despite our humble beginnings, we actually have 46% of our Figma users coming from the MIA region, which we think is just incredible. Uh, starting in January of 2019, we established a small presence uh, in Figma Amsterdam. And for Figma Amsterdam, uh, that was a small support team. And now fast forwarding to this month, we've actually just announced our new Europe hub in London. Of course, this year was not exactly what we expected. We thought we would be hosting an office warming party in person. Uh, we thought Config Europe would be in person, and that's not what 2020 had planned. However, we are so motivated and so amazed to see all of you designing from home. When you're creating a design system together, people need to be able to advance the state of the design system, and they also need to be able to rely on the design system uh, being the same way and also having consistency. Creativity gives you the freedom to innovate and create things no one's ever seen before. Whereas structure makes it so you can work fast and also be really efficient and be consistent. So teams need both. We believe there needs to be a bridge between ideation and that production, between that creativity and that structure, between design and code. And we believe design systems can be that bridge. Today, you're gonna to see some major updates to Figma's design system functionality. Spotify uh, has an amazing design system called Encore, which they very graciously lent to us today to let us show off some of these new features. Uh, today, we are announcing a new version of Instant Swap that lets you easily navigate your library and make it so you can swap instances faster. If I'm in this icon right here, I can now click uh, my, our new Instant Swap menu. And you can see on the right-hand side, as I scroll, that I have an inline preview of all the different icons that I can use. Or I can search. We're super excited to announce variants. This is obviously a lot more complex because we've got a bunch of different dimensions here. We have you know, there's a large button, there's a small button, there's a primary button, a secondary button. We've got green, we've got white. Uh, we have icon, no icon. And we also have state. You have got uh, default, pressed, and inactive. You can even imagine if it was on web, you'd have a hover state too. And so uh, this is a much more complex uh, group of components. But again, because we have that forward slash naming structure that we've seen so many of you use, we can just press this button, combine as variants. And just like that, now I've got one button in my assets panel instead of, you know, 10,000 buttons. I want to now uh, take my button and put it into the screen. I can simply drag it in, and now I've got a really nice UI on the right-hand side that lets me navigate and try out different variations of this component. I can go from primary to secondary. I can go from green to white or back again. I can add an icon, interactive components, which will be launching in January. So now, let's see how it works. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have just one screen, which has been defined as all these different uh, components here. We also have that hooked up to another screen. So if I go to my library, it'll go to this other screen that has a few other components, which are defined right here. I can now play my prototype. And you'll see that I can just instantly press all of these, and they go back and forth, and it just works. Next up, I want to talk about auto layout. So now what I can do is I can go into my design and I can actually have this fill the container instead. So along with a brand new UI, which I think you'll really like, I can change this from fixed width to fill container. And now when I stretch this horizontally, it just stretches, no big deal. But what's even more impressive, I think, is that now you'll be able to prototype things for fully responsive designs. For example, this is using an instance of this component here. And if I stretch this in different directions, you'll see it just adapts. It's adjusting vertically and horizontally as it goes. Padding is another area of Figma that we've heard a lot of people have some issues with when it comes to auto layout. For example, what if I want to have uh, a bit of additional padding for this part of the auto layout frame? I can go up here now uh, before, what I'd have to do is I'd have to create spacers. And with those spacers, uh, I'd have to make it so that they would be uh, in this flow, which is a bit complicated and convoluted. Now I can just add additional vertical padding, and it just works. If I want to do horizontal padding to indent all these, I can also go into my padding menu, and I can add 16 pixels there, and just indent them all. Uh, so that makes it really easy 
you very quickly uh, use padding in your auto layout. Today, uh, we're going to also be announcing our Inspect tab, uh, which will make it easier for engineers to get information out of Figma. If I go into the Inspect panel, you'll notice it's completely redesigned. And now what I can do is I can actually, if I want to, for example, get, let's say, uh, the CSS properties, I can just press copy, go in here, and press paste, and it instantly copies over. Or, alternatively, if I want to get the copy out, I can just copy the content and paste that as well. For our colors, uh, it's easy to get named colors now out of Figma. I can just copy and paste. In addition to that, I can also look at this in RGB, HSL, uh, and other options as well as hex. Last but not least, for variants, uh, I can just copy and then paste all my variants. In summary, we've talked about variants, instant swap menu, interactive components, auto layout updates, and spec tab. Just to show you when everything's launching, we've got launching today is a new instant swap menu and also our inspect tab. Launching November is our auto layout and variants. And finally, launching in January will be interactive component. Huge thank you to everyone watching, and especially a big thank you to everyone who worked on these features. And if you're interested in learning more about Encore, check it out at Spotify.Design.